<laughs> like somebody jacked his helmet off his bike while he's waiting for me to come and everybody's just watching the finish line. It's like super Walmart, but small. What a big difference from yesterday. That was like incredibly flowy, really fast. There were lots of dudes who are probably enduro guys just flying down the trail through these little chunky little rocks. No fear at all. I can't hold my bowl of oatmeal, my arms are too tired. Power went out in the middle of breakfast, guys. Now what? No breakfast for you. Maybe there's enough heat left here to cook these eggs. No power. Is this the yeah. Good. So we don't have to race. <laughs> Good morning from Team Super Hard. It's super early. We're super tired. Today's gonna be super long. My name's Lucas Eddie. I'm Jesse, I think. And today's the mountain race, day four <clears throat> of Sea to Sky, and it's going to be a big one. we got to go to the beach to get started. We really don't know what to expect. Everything this year has been a lot different from when Lucas and Brock did it last year, and it certainly is unique to me because I don't remember last time I've ridden like three days in a row or two days in a row, and this <laughs> will be hard. the fourth day in a row of racing, or at least trying to go fast through really hard stuff. So. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. I'm also looking forward to getting to the finish line, wherever that may be tomorrow <laughs> or today. <laughs> yes, let's do it. From the beach to the mayhem, here we are at the start of the last day of Red Bull Sea to Sky. The goal for the pros is to get to the top of that mountain. That's the finish line. For normal people like me, there's some checkpoints along the way, like a silver finish, and before that there's a bronze finish. But none of it's going to be easy to get to. Uh, there's still like three or 400 people here. I don't know, we'll just see how it goes today. Looking forward to uh, the end. That's the end.
<laughs> We're stuck here. I don't know what's up there. More necks of bottles. Yeah, it's beautiful. Look at that. It's nice out here. Having fun. <laughs> Boom, what's up everybody? We got one more giveaway in this season of Super Hard. This is for two $500 gift cards, one for you, one for your buddy. This is how you win. You have to tag Mountain Race, that phrase, in the comments below. And you also have to tag your buddy's name that you would choose to take on an international hard enduro dirt bike riding adventure. Could be somebody you like, could be somebody you hate, and you want to take them somewhere where they're going to be miserable and suffering, or it could be one of your buddies that you like to suffer with. So tag their name below and the word mountain race, the pinnacle of this race at Sea to Sky, the hardest race any of us have ever done. And you guys could be walking away with a thousand dollars in climb goods, your choice, gift card style. Just do it, it's easy. <laughs> made a checkpoint four after his male's diner or whatever it was called and I cracked the radiator again. No more cooling left in this bad boy. It's all down here. So that's the end of my sea to sky run. I'm not gonna get stranded out here with a seized motor and a bike I have to buy in another country.
first super hard update of the day. Made it past checkpoint eight, that's a silver finish. Uh, there's not enough time to get to the top, but I'll just keep going and see if I can beat last year's result. So far, bike feels great, tire still feels good. Eating some treats, as usual. And there are way fewer people out here. So now the trail is way less ridden. And we'll see what kind of obstacles we encounter. Oh, wow. Uh, I guess we're gonna see stuff like that. That <laughs> God, this stick is holding me. Oh, ah! oh. oh God. Very hard. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Oh, oh Thomas the train here didn't quite finish back to the paddock but it finished the race. We're good here. It's okay. Well done, done bro. Nice work boys. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Nice work hard, boys. Bro. It's a little hard. <laughs> there we go. That's checkpoint nine, same as last year. Probably not gonna make a lot of sense if I try to talk right now, so maybe I'll just save it for later when we're back at the pits with everybody. But <laughs> That's it. See you at the pit. <laughs> Gate, and my mood was incredible. I got to the finish line or the, the check line there, and I was like, Man, I got one hour to the cutoff. I'm not gonna make it to the top, but I feel good, or like an hour and a half maybe. But I feel good, like, I'll just keep moving. I can do anything for an hour, like, it's fine. And then, like, 20 minutes in, I was like, This sucks. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to do this for an hour. <laughs> So much harder than last yeah, year. Like, like way harder than oh, last year. Yeah. And last year was hard. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, the whole time I was like, when will this end? It was brutal. Like it was hard enough without making mistakes, but I just got into a little fatigue and I just made mistake after mistake after mistake and it just compounds the effort. I couldn't get it flow and I was basically in survival mode pretty early, probably like five or 10 miles in. It was super fun. Made it to the bronze finish. Uh, in about two and a half hours and decided to call it quits and go uh, watch Joe finish up top, but he didn't come through. It was very, very close, um, but the five hour cutoff caught him. Only 14 finishers. I got to check 13, which is the bottom of the hill, and that's the backseat. I don't know. We're back. <laughs> we're back. And by back, I mean we're back in the United States. I don't know what you're thinking, but I mean, a lot of these races have slogans. This one does too. It's the most enjoyable hard enduro race. Now, I don't know any promoter in the world that started a hard enduro race to make it fun for people. Do you? I don't think that's a it's, thing. It's a certain type of fun, right? It's not just plain, simple fun. <laughs> yeah. I don't think that's a... I think that's a misadvertisement. I think it's pretty legitimate. It's pretty enjoyable. No, it's it's really enjoyable. When you compare it to all the other kind of races that we've done for Super Hard, which is four of the U.S. series, no five, five of the U.S. Hard Zero series races. Yeah, if you count the TK, it becomes very clear why this is enjoyable. Like it's if you're on the Mediterranean Sea, half the half the race days you're done around noon, so you can go and chill out. Like people can go swim and go eat food, do whatever. Like you're not doing you're not doing four six hour race days in a row so there's time to do other stuff there's time to kind of 
relax and reset, stretch out, do whatever. Uh, and then really the last day is the day that really kicks your butt all the way. Yeah. Through. I think what I saw most at this race was the amount of tourists that come to do the race. It was really like one of those experience things you check off, kind of like I've seen, you know, covering hard enduros on the international scale as a journalist, you see people just show up just to get the experience, not to really be that competitive or they just go to camp out and just do the prologue and then they just party and get drunk with their buddies for the rest of the weekend. And this kind of had a lot of that vibe, but it's a little more serious than that. Like, I mean, most of the people went out to compete every day, but really it was it was set up almost in like phases, like like kind of like shockingly hard on the beach race just for a short sprint. And then the first half of the first day was just gnarly and wiped people out. And they were like, what's it gonna be like tomorrow? And probably scared to death. And then the next day ended up being pretty mellow and fast and fun. And then finally we're at the last day, like you said, it really kind of kicked your butt, which was the point of hard enduro, right? Right, right, totally. The final day, kick some butt. Recap that final day for us, because we, we didn't have a lot of energy at the end of the day in the pits. No, to talk about no it. you can see we're not making a lot of sense there at the end of the day. Uh, basically, the most the simplest summary possible is that it starts out pretty hard and it just keeps getting harder all day long. And it's kind of a great way to set you up in your like overall position and where you rank in the whole field that was there. It was like 350-ish people. And by the end of four days, every day you finish and you get a new starting order for the next day. And by the end of four days, you kind of know where you stack up. Yeah, it pushes you to your limit every day. And then it, it kind of works out that you get to your limit by the end of the race. And that's your finish result. Oh, also remember this. So in previous years, there have been anywhere from 45 to 60 people who make it to the top of the mountain. Because you race from the beach to the top of Mount Olympus there. And it's last year was 45 people, and, and this year it was 14. 14 people made it to the finish. So that kind of tells you how much harder it was this year. Like in the amount of time we had with the train we had to cross that just keep, kept getting harder, it just weeds people out. And eventually people just can't go fast enough yeah. to get to the end of the time limit. I think the Sea to Sky guys, I think they did a pretty good job putting on a race that's just, just an epic terrain. We were literally riding on a hiking trail that goes from the top of Turkey to the bottom of Turkey, and that's where the race course was. And yeah, man, it's super cool to see how people can just get along. Like even people from different countries can be battling with someone all day long and then get to the finish and be stoked for each other. Like just not speaking the same language, totally united on having a great time on dirt bikes. And it's just cool, man. Like what a great, what a great feeling. The only place that didn't work out was on the beach race. People were angry on the beach race. Yeah. I mean, Brock got punched, or he punched <laughs> yeah, Brock I'm not sure which way it worked. So really, I think we can sum it up that it was pretty successful for Team Super Hard Amateur Race Team here this time. Yeah. Joe was like one checkpoint away from the finish line when he timed out. So he was super, super close in that top 30, like really comfortably in that top 30. So, so props to him. He crushed it on a totally clapped out rental bike. You guys can watch the other episodes and see how that stuff goes, what he's fixing on it and how ridiculous that whole situation was. Mesa also crushed it on also a clapped out rental bike every single day she climbed up places. Uh, I think the beach race was kind of intimidating for her. She admitted it. She was like, I wasn't super comfortable with that, uh, but she did it anyways. And just doing that beach race got her further up in the starting order for the next day and then she just kept climbing places every single day there i think one of the days she gained like 50 spots or something like so she she kicked ass big big time brock also uh, i think he was a little disappointed with his beach race run but then every single day he climbed up places and finished really close to that top 100 um, so good for him for doing that he's not a born and bred hard enduro guy he rides snow bikes and like does desert racing and motocross and that kind of stuff so he's definitely not in his element in this kind of stuff either and Jesse, how did, how did it go for you? Let's hear it. Oh, I started out predictably, uh, just not impressive. And then I got a little better and then I got quite a bit better. And then I kind of went downhill again. So, um, I felt like I rat rode. Okay. I felt like, you know, riding a familiar bike help, you know, I was on the KTM XCW. That was what I raced all year. And it was pretty easy for me to ride. Um, my big thing is just like, energy conservation 100 percent like it's hard for me to get even get into a racing mindset when i'm just constantly knowing that i'm going to be cooked so i have to just conserve as much energy but um i was happy with the race course i think i said multiple days that um it's some of the most enjoyable terrain to ride a hard enduro on it's all doable if you're just a little bit on your game totally. so uh, really big challenge really cool challenge 
Uh, props to Joe, like I knew if we just brought a pro onto the super hard amateur race team, our results for our team would just be elevated. So I'm glad that he came on board. The pros make everything look too easy. And that's why we're doing this video series every time is to show what it's really actually like. And not to like show you what it's really actually like to scare people, but to like almost do the opposite. Be like, yeah, it's gonna be as difficult as you think it is, but it's also more fun than you think it's gonna be. Yeah, really the main takeaway, no matter what, if you're watching this and you're thinking about doing a dirt bike race is to try it. I hope we're showing you guys that this is a lot more fun than anybody else is saying that it is. And it's a lot more attainable than you might realize. Like you just have to show up, bring your bike, bring your friends, make new friends, and you'll have a pretty good time. There's really no other way to get this kind of experience on your dirt bike than to try racing. So, highly recommended. The hardest part is honestly getting off your ass and signing up and going to the race. Like once you get past that point, you're gonna be good to go. So just do it, stand up, walk somewhere where you can put numbers into a computer and sign up for a race. Yes. I get to do it, it's very easy. Yes, exactly. All right, we're done. Okay, that's all for Super Hard Season 2. Stay tuned. Good stuff coming out pretty soon. Season 3 is coming soon.